Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell, and welcome to today's discussion point for the MMORPG analysis series, where we're going to be talking about how retention is the new sort of number that everyone's talking about, as opposed to box sales like it used to be. Um, we're going to be diving into, for example, uh, Mortal Online 2's recent kind of crushing it numbers, so to speak. 110,000 sales out the gate, number four on Steam. And then we can turn around and look at New World having lost over 90% of its player race and say, yeah, well, box sales don't mean everything. Retention is far more important. That's today's discussion point. Before we dive in, though, if this is your first time here, do me a favor. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, do all those things so you get updates for future episodes in this series, as well as any of the live streams and other stuff I do here on YouTube. I do live stream here on this channel. I don't do Twitch. Um, and we do lots of different things here on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, there's plenty of playlists and all that good stuff. Also, join our Discord. Links are down below. Let's dive in to today's article. So, I, you know, recently MMORPG.com had this piece on um, Star Vault having had a bigger launch than anticipated with Mortal Online 2 selling over 110,000 copies hitting number four on Steam as the demand crushes expectations, but of course they are plagued by bugs. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Lots of every game launches with bugs. Every single MMORPG in the history of MMORPGs launches with bugs. There are always patches. They get fixed. I do not consider bugs to be things that drive people away from games. They are definitely a contributing factor, but there are a lot of other issues at play these days that that take people outside of games. So one of the things I would like to point out before we move on to to anything else in this topic is the fact that the guys behind Mortal Online 2 have done something in my mind that's really credible, which is they've said that, hey, until we get things fixed, we're not going to be charging the subscriptions. Like, that's going to be buy to play. You're going to be able to play it until we get these issues sorted out, and we'll go from there. Now, what sparked me to want to have this conversation today was actually a comment someone had left in the description section of this article. We said, great, you sold 110,000 copies, but what about retention? And that got the wheels spinning because we can go over to uh, New World and look at the fact that um, New World is down to 41,000 players as of this morning, um, uh, almost 42,000 from a peak of 913,000. Now, all games out there, you're going to have a whole bunch at launch and then the honeymoon period gets over and you lose a bunch of people. But what's very interesting, and we're going to, we're going to look at three games this morning. We're going to look at New World. We're going to look at, um, we're going to look at Shadow of the Avatar. We're going to look at Crowfall. The reason I want to look at these three games is because um, these are big games that had veterans staff behind them. And despite the veteran status, despite the fact that they had a certain amount of pull or budget or whatever the case might be, these games have still, and I'm going to use air quotes here, failed in the eyes of the public. Now, looking at New World, 41,000 players, um, and the, the peak being within the last 25 hour, 24 hours, 66,000. So let's say between 41 and 66, they've got an average of, say, 50,000 players per day. 50,000 players daily logging into your game is a very healthy, respectable number that will definitely allow you to continue forward development on your game. End of story. So when when I use the air quotes around success or successful, this is the thing, you know, because we have to look at what the industry or the player base considers to be successful versus what is actually needed to continue forward development on the game. Because anytime a game can sustain enough of a player base to continue forward development, continue patching, continue to make new content. It is a successful game. It doesn't matter how many players it has. I would love to use EverQuest 1, EverQuest 2, Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Elder Republic. These are all games that I think we can look at and say, these are not games that are crushing it by today's standards. They're barely ever in the news, except for the fact that they keep running these games are continually updating they have new expansions every single year they're continually patching every few months they have an ongoing player base of anywhere between 30 and 50,000 players which is more than enough to sustain uh, by the way those are minimum numbers i think like i can't remember i think lord of the rings online has like a, around a, a couple hundred thousand maybe i forget but um 
the numbers being what they are, like EverQuest 1 and EverQuest 2, especially I think EverQuest 2 is in the 30,000 ballpark, as an example, like it's one of the lowers on the list, and it still maintains enough of an audience to continue to push out new expansions every year, new TLP servers, and ongoing development with a small crew. So by all uses of the word successful, EverQuest 2 is a successful game despite the fact that it is nowhere near the numbers that it had in its heyday, which were never as big as... Um, they were never as big as, say, World of Warcraft or even, say, um, New World. The point being, it used to be box sales were the thing that everyone looked at. If a game sold a certain amount of numbers, it was lauded as being a success. But these days, success is measured in different metrics. And one of the metrics that's being promoted around, not just within community discussions, but within the industry as well these days, is retention. Because as we know, in today's world, there are thousands of games i get dozens of games every week given to me for free between gog epic playstation and xbox all of those platforms um also there's ea origin or whatever it's called ea play these days like all of these platforms are vying for my attention epic etc like i'm getting steam you name it i'm getting games just given to me constantly throughout the week i get 20, 30 games for free every single week on top of all these games that come out that want me to pay for them. So the attention span is a lot lower than it used to be for people because we just have so much that it's impossible to keep up. So we have to pick and choose our battles and, and play games that we want to enjoy. But the reality is that most people, these games are going to play a game for two to three months. And at that point, they're ready to move on to something else. So it's natural to see a huge spike at the beginning and, and a dip within the first, say, three months of the game. Now, looking at, say, New World, we can say that, um, you know, going from 900,000 at its all-time peak down to 50,000, say, as a daily average, doesn't look good in the grand scheme of metrics, but in the, in the overall scheme of is it a successful game with enough players to keep it moving forward? Yes, 50,000 players is more than enough to provide a profit margin that keeps them moving forward. But it's interesting is that you can look back at New World, and even all the way back in late October, New World was losing 135,000 players a week after its launch. Now, a lot of people like to look at this and say, oh, it's because of all the bugs. There were definitely bugs. There were definitely issues. But again, bugs alone do not drive players away from a game because every game has bugs when it launches. Even Golden Child Valheim an early access title that sold millions of copies last year, even that game has and still has bugs that are continually patched out. Some people argue it didn't have as many bugs. It, the amount of bugs doesn't matter. The point is every game launches with bugs. Every game has patches. I believe Dying Light 2 is getting ready to launch, and the devs are out there telling people, please don't play the game until the day one patch launches. Please don't play the game until we get the patch to you because the the actual launch version is so filled with bugs we don't want you to have we don't want to have a cyberpunk 2077 fiasco on our hands please 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 wait for the patch which just goes to show you it doesn't matter what game we're talking about every game is going to have bugs when it launches um so bugs contributed to it but also there's just the fact that you, there's not enough content in the world to keep players in one game anymore but how many you can keep is obviously um, something that's very important in the discussion of success I don't know how accurate this is I couldn't I don't think steam charts I, I didn't really find anything for crowfall maybe I didn't even know digging this morning um, I don't know how accurate this article is it looks like it's up to today um, but so this one bear with me because I don't know how accurate it is um, crowfall estimated had 600,000 total players of subscribers, right? That's the total players it had. Yet daily players is tracked less than 20 players per day throughout the month. Um, is there a Steam chart? Steam chart? Crowfall? I don't think there is. Um, as far as I'm aware, I mean, there's there's other things you can look at, other metrics, but this is this was very interesting to me. If this is accurate, you've got a game that has or has sold 600,000, but yet 20 people is all that's playing on a daily basis. That's a dead game. Like that's 
And yet we have people behind this game who built Star Wars Galaxies. We have people who built Shadowbane, like big names in the industry, and yet they couldn't figure out how to retain. And people will say, oh, the game had bad design, it had bugs. Again, bad design, and 600,000 people bought this game. Obviously, they liked what they were being told about the design. They liked what they saw, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Turns out they just didn't want to play the game. Things change over the years. Shroud of the Avatar is another one of my favorites because it sold over 100,000 copies. And its all-time peak on Steam was 600, right? And that wasn't even launch. Like, the all-time peak wasn't around the launch. It was, as I recall years before launch um and then it has slowly trickled down to where it has an average of around 50 ish per day is all that plays shot of the avatar another game designed by a long-term uh, veteran of the industry and yet even his name and and i've played the game it's not a it's not it's not for me but it's not a bad game it's just people have changed that these types of games aren't what most people want to play today and the reality is you know shred the avatar went from having a nearly 40 man team developing it with tens of millions of dollars behind it to now it's a one man team with some subcontractors and yeah um so again a big name behind it and having a fun game doesn't necessarily guarantee success so going back to the mortal online 2 you know, they're having, again, New World had very strong numbers out the gate. They crushed it in terms of, you know, pre-order sales. And they had like an all-time peak on Steam, broke a bunch of records, and then immediately vroom, dive bombed. So everyone's looking at Mortal Online 2 and going, great, you sold a lot of copies out of the gate. That doesn't mean anything anymore. It doesn't. Because selling a bunch of box copies, it only gives you money to pay salaries for a limited amount of time before you're out of money. So if you've sold 100,000 copies and you're selling it for four, you know, whatever, four million, four, four, forty dollars, I don't know what the box price is. Let's say they made four or five million dollars off of box sales, right? That's great. But how much of that has to go back and and recoup the development costs up to this point? and or pay off investors and or pay off bankers and or pay off whoever helped you fund the project in the first place. I don't know the funding behind this. I'm using just, I'm just speaking generally here. Even if they're in the clear in terms of debt and the $4 million is theirs after taxes and everything else, you have a lot less than $4 million. Take off the overhead for running the live game. You've got even less. So you only have a certain amount that you have to work with in terms of paying salaries. So you only have that much time to fix all of the issues before that money runs out. So it's good that they're not going to be charging people a sub until they fix those issues. But also the question is, do they have enough money to get to the finish line to get the issues fixed to where they can sell more copies and to retain the player base to keep moving forward? Because as we can see, it doesn't matter what game you talk about. At the end of the day, you're going to retain a lot less. The numbers that I've have access to and I've talked about this on the show quite a few times and also on other shows looking for more monies and MMORPGs is at the end of the day um, every game out there in the history of MMORPGs generally has a 5% it's it's in that 5 to 7% bracket are the amount of total players who will continue to pay for your game over the lifetime of the game regardless of issues regardless of bugs regardless of development time you've got a 5 to 7% bracket so if you look at that and you look at the fact that 90 plus percent of New World, 90 plus percent of Crowfall, 90 plus percent of Shroud of the Avatar, like all of these games, that data holds it holds out. It stands true that you lose 90 to 95 percent of your total player base over time, and you're only going to retain a small percentage. So in order to have a five percent that's large enough to sustain your ongoing development, you're going to need to sell a hell of a lot more than 100,000 boxes. To be able to survive even in the case of new world yeah they sold a lot they're down to 50,000 50,000 daily is a healthy number that's more than enough to keep it going as we can see with like everquest 2 only having 25 to 30,000 that's enough to keep it sustaining um but with 100,000 sales you're lucky if you're going to have five to ten thousand people who retain their attention long enough to continue with you long term and five to ten thousand people may not be enough to keep that game on the up and up it remains to be seen anyway um let me know what you think about the discussion point today um what do you think do you agree is retention the new 
demographic that we're looking at, the, the new metric that needs to be considered? Because I don't think box prices mean anything anymore. Box sales, excuse me. Retention is where it's at. Because in a world where you can get 50 free games every single month, um, someone asking you to pay money for their their title means that they have to have something that's exceptionally good. And if they're asking you to pay to play that game beyond a 30 to 60 hour experience, like a single player title, and they want you to invest time like an MMORPG, they better have something that's absolutely phenomenal to be able to retain your attention over the course of the long term. Love to know your thoughts on this. Drop your comments down below. Like the video if you do like it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. All those things. I'm 15 minutes in, which is too long. I'm going to head out of here. If you want to support the channel, don't forget to head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash wandering hermits. You can pick up a subscription for as little as three bucks a month, buy me a cup of coffee, and check out what I'm working on with my wife and my brother, building the world of the weave in the void behind me, fifth edition tabletop, point and click game, book series, all those things. Pre order all of them. Join us in Discord. Links are down below. See everybody in the next episode. Peace.